Hi, everyone. I'm Dane Young with UGASports.com alongside Brent Rollins. This is Film Don't Lie, our weekly feature, which is now video exclusive. So we've done some cool stuff with text over the years. We'll still do a little bit of that as it warrants, but we really want to show off with the video to, to display what Georgia is doing. And Brent, you wrote about it in your postgame recap on UGASports.com. It is Charleston Southern, but there's still some nifty things to point out here in the offensive uh, game film. Yeah, some very unique things, some things that did in the running game that where we pointed out last week, hey, you got some issues. And then obviously it's much easier to clear up those issues against an FCS team. But also just a few things from a from a passing game standpoint that I want to see, like, do they have layers off of that? Some things with with, with Stetson and his, and his drop that I, I think I have, you know, from me and my perspective that I would like to see a little different. But you know, other, other than that, it's, it's one of those games where you get to have a little fun and, and a lot of people get to play. A lot of people did indeed get to play. We'll bring up this screen share so you can see. This is offensive uh, things that, that stood out to us. It all starts to me, Brent, with Jordan Davis's touchdown run. We've seen this jumbo package before. What caught your eye about how they shifted early on in this play? Uh, so this is actually the second one that they run. He scored. They run it a second time. And what was two things that caught my eye. One – is the previous play, or before the first time they did this, the previous play was a handoff to Zamir, and he got stopped at the one. And the instant he got stopped at the one, if you watch, if you focus on Stetson, he's pointing to the sideline, like, let's run the play. And, you, you know, they talked about after the game that they had just put this in. But obviously, the first to me, the first time they ran it was the most athletic play that Davis, he tried to jump in from, like, the three-yard line, uh, which was amazing. But the second time they ran it, I'm like, my first thought was, please don't get hurt. Yeah. Because now the defense is ticked because they know you're doing the exact same thing again. And, and the guy from the outside comes screaming at his ankles. And my that was my first thought was just don't get hurt. All right. So Georgia lines up initially Jordan Davis to the left side on the offensive line right beside uh, Darnell Washington. Jalen Carter at fullback, Zimmer White at running back. Carter shifts out over here to wide receiver. White shifts the other way. Here comes Davis in the backfield. And important to note, not a fullback on this play anymore. No. Uh, they, they went Barry Sanders style. You're yep. an athlete, Jordan Davis. Solo back. Let's make this happen. Go be fridge 2.0. They lined up. He, he, he's got his hand in the ground. He knows how to do that part well, right? Yes, very much so. And the guy just dives at his ankles. And I was like, okay, get up. Don't, you know, don't get hurt. Now, the interesting thing for me with this is that now that you've shown this, and I know we talked about this beforehand, the funnest part of this is twofold. One, or threefold, actually. One, he scores. He does Like, it's score. awesome. And, and like, senior day, that guy, what he's meant to the university, what he's meant to the team, the personality, the big, you know, the personality that he is. Like, that's just... That's a perfect way to, you know, your last game between the hedges to end on a touchdown. And but like should, you said. Well, we, we, we should point out real fast, too, poor Warren Erickson. Crashes in the middle, right? And, where and gets all three, three all 340 of Jordan Ooh. right there. Right on the, the left. Laying on him. He's, at one point, you could see, like, his hand, hey, did we score? Yeah, we scored. Now get up. Give me some. <laughs> I need to breathe. I need to breathe. <laughs> His poor legs here underneath Jordan Davis and really Cedric Van Pran and a couple other guys as well. That is the yep. most unenviable place I've ever seen in the bottom of a pile right here where yep. Warren Erickson is. All right. Now point out your favorite part, which, I, by the way, I 100% noticed during the game too. Bottom of the formation. We talked about him. Jalen Carter. Former tight end. Former tight end. Watch here. This is a straight up. Whoop. A little hezzy into the slant. Look, that inside nice. slant receiver moves. He wanted the ball. He said, yes. I love you, Jordan. I know what your senior day. I'm going to show you something here. Whoop. He's open. I'm just saying. Now, just the saying other – yeah, go if, for it. If Stetson kept it, kept it, look at that. Yes, and and he's going to go get it, and we know he can catch. Like the f catch he made last year as a fullback, phenomenal catch. But the other thing that I thought with this is you got Darnell at tight end on the backside, and you got Stetson reversing out. You know, he's – goes to the left first as opposed to just opening it up and, and handing it like a dive. So he reverses out. I was thinking, all right, hey, little play action. 
pop it to Darnell uh, right over the backers after this might be kind of the next wrinkle that they have off of this. And maybe we, maybe we see that down the road, but still yet a great thing on senior day. Glad they got it over. You know, they did it in the first drive. It worked out where Zamir got stopped on the one yard line or two yard line right before that. Uh, and you know, Hey, just a great moment for a great kid. Uh, we've, you know, I think, I don't know if I've met him personally and he's just a phenomenal human being. And he, you know, his personality, his just his general niceness, I guess, is probably the best way to say it. He's just he's he is truly that big teddy bear when you're around him. Now that I notice it, Zamir White was ready for a fade up here. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's 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 ready for that. Though we always I will say this, always fade the fade. Don't don't throw the fade. It's it's the lowest percentage play, one of the lowest percentage plays in football. I, but I, a phenomenal I, moment. And what was great about it too was all of the teammates, like the entire team, just loved every second of that. And you, know, you can't you can't go wrong with that. I learned from you, second and ten runs and fades in the red zone, don't do it. Yep. Don't. Stay away from them. All right, second play we want to break down here. This is a, a pretty cool uh, protection, uh, I think. You, you see Darnell Washington uh, out here. He, he comes in and then heads back out to the uh, top of the screen. And here's the thing that I noticed, Bryn, you, you can tell me what you saw. It created miscommunication almost immediately with the linebackers from uh, Charleston Southern. Yeah, and, and, and you know, this is, by the way, you think about this play, this is fourth and six. I think this is the fourth. I'm pretty sure this is fourth and six, fourth and five, uh, the touchdown to, to Kenny Mack. And, you know, that's, hey, hey, we got some confidence in our ability to just block their guys. So we're going to just toss it to him. Now, I will say two things fr from uh, just perspective of this with how we want to look. I wish, and they do this on their toss as well. I would love to see McIntosh getting out there faster. Like he's kind of just, hey, I'm going to get out here a little bit and then get the ball. I would love to see him get out there just a little bit faster. Uh, but outside of that, because this is very much like the toss from the from the shotgun, Darnell Washington. I mean, he probably felt like he was back in high school again, like block, trying to block some of these guys. It was a good job by him, and it was a good sort of redirect, good recovery from Marcus Rosemary Jackson on the outside when we get to the, his spot there, and then eighty-one Rosemary Jackson kind of recovers. And he's there. He slips out a little bit. All right. So then Darnell just destroys the kid and puts buries him into the ground. I, I, that's it's a theme, by the way, for the day. And then Rosemary Jack Saint recovers just enough quickly, and then uh, to the house, um, Kenny Mack goes. Now I will say, if you go roll back just a little bit, Brock Bowers is the one on this play to me, where his initial job was to me phenomenal, breaking down. And attacking the outside edge and the outside shoulder uh, of the of the defender, and then but you know just get your butt. He got his head there. Boom, heads on the outside, heads on the right side. Get your butt there. Getting turned just a little bit more, and that guy doesn't get involved in the play whatsoever. But still, yeah, it gets gets enough of him, and you got enough speed. And obviously, it's it's those guys, those players that you're playing against, and you you don't have to worry much about it. But the big thing for this to me is is moving forward both with their quick toss, you know, just pitch sweep game. And then these type of screens get out there faster, get out there faster because the defensive end here actually, you know, pushes up the field a little bit, almost gets into the play. You're going to face better athletes over, you know, in the SEC championship game in the playoff, obviously, you know, get out there as fast as you can get away from them. They're not going to get involved in the play. If you get out there fast, the slower you get out there, the more likely those guys might get involved in the play. Yeah, this is a tackle from uh, number 40 uh, against most teams that Georgia would play in its schedule back here for, for a very short gain. Uh, but just a speed difference against Charleston Southern, that's just the level of athlete. Which, by game. the way, number number 40, by the way, he actually played not too bad. He made some plays. And, you know, could tell he's very extensional, extensional, very smart kid, but obviously not in anywhere near uh, well, the last athlete to play against Georgia. Last thing I wanted to point out in this play was, uh, and, and we, I, I've seen this more and more as I've looked at Georgia's offensive line, just the like quick crash cut. from the interior. Yeah, to, to cut. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know the terminology better than I do, but I, I've seen more of that uh, from Georgia's interior offensive linemen. Yeah, get you know, know that guys are going to be pushing up field, getting the ball out quick, cut them, now they're out of play.
and then it's a touchdown for Georgia because you got speed on the edge. Yep. Which uh, shout out to to Schaefer here for getting to the end zone first to celebrate. Oh, yeah. Celebrating. <laughs> uh, we saw a lot of RPOs in this game, and I think it's going to be. You always talk about the next evolution of what Todd Munkin is doing. I, I think this is it. We saw it a few times. When does Georgia use the space on the edge? And and, and this is one where I would love to know if that's if this is truly something where there's a ch- where it's a choice. Because if it is a choice, and by the way, I don't think it is on this play, uh, but I would love to see Bowers get his head and you know get on the inside of the guy. But if it if it is if it's actual choice, now he's kind of blocking as if it is the the quick screen, and he needs to get outside leverage. But still, yet on the top of the screen, the running play itself, this is straight up big on big, dude on dude, and. Unfortunately for number 33 for Charleston Southern, the right defensive end, he's all – I was curious. He didn't look very big. I was curious, so I looked him up. He's all of 5'10", 225 listed. And he got a whole lot of Darnell this game, especially early. And that's just a mismatch uh, all day, every day. But Caves there, Bowers, Caves. I mean, it, it, it it's – or Fitzpatrick, sorry, Caves the guy in. Schaefer gets enough of a guy and Cook just explodes uh, through. Now, because, and the reason I pointed out Bowers, if he does know it's a running play, like if he, if he knows this is not an option of, of being something that comes out to him and he gets inside a number two, like this might be a touchdown. Cut him off but right obviously, there. Yes, and getting your head across. But if it is something that there is a legitimate possibility of the, the, of the quick screen, the, quick, the now throw being made, and he's got to get that outside leverage, fine, by all means. Georgia's no, offensive, still... uh, offensive line was just dominant in this game, and you see it here combined with the speed of the running backs. Again, against a lot of teams, I don't know that this is the game that it is, but Georgia took advantage. No, and it's it's one of those things where even a, a lot of these plays, that what's sad for Charleston Southern, you know, hey, give yourself a chance. Like, they're beat before the play even starts. Like, this, this play, this is, you know, pulling lead here. Uh, with with Samir, I think this might have been the first play of the game. Uh, and when Bowers comes down, right before he's obviously coming down and staying in motion. So if he's doing that, he's coming inside. He's cracking inside right now. And before you even do anything, count the guys on on the wide side of the field. They have six defenders on the wide side of the field, five into the boundary. Georgia pulls and leads. The numbers are just a massive disadvantage uh, for the defense. Here comes uh, Schaefer. Yep. Schaefer gets the gets, the gets the kick out. Van Pran actually on this. I don't know that he it touches anyone. Luckily, uh, somebody takes a bad angle. He touches Brock uh, Bowers. Uh, a little bit. Bowers, again, does a good job. And it's the same thing that we talked about earlier with Bowers uh, on the, the play to, to Kenny Mack is he does a great job of here breaking down and putting his head in the right place. You want your head on the outside here because the guys went outside of you. Head on the defense's right shoulder here, but get your butt turned to where that guy doesn't get into the play at all. He does, He's not a good enough athlete right now to get involved in this play. And Zamir actually has to, you know, kind of slow down just a little bit here. And, but the guy with the, uh, the white long sleeves right behind Bowers, the guy that Bowers is blocking, takes a bad angle, goes inside and opens up the outside lane for Zamir. Big play to start the game. And we must point out, Schaefer, yeah, you have the weight advantage and the size advantage, but that's what you're supposed to do. Good job. Oh, yeah. Destroy the guy. You know, get in the way. The other thing I noticed is uh, I, I love the effort that you see on this play from Jermaine Burton running down the field and then also A.D. Mitchell running down the field uh, because this is Charleston Southern. It could be an easy game to loaf. Uh, they don't want to see that on film when they get in there and watch it with coaches. Nope, just like, we're, just like we say, right? Film don't lie. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't, you know, and the loaf, by the way, the loafs are something that are probably are likely counted. Uh, I know in, in many, uh, you know, even in youth football, we, we count the loafs and, and don't want, you don't want to be singled out for that. All right. Before we even start, Dane, do you think you know what Warren McClendon is doing on this play? I'm highlighting reason- him here. I'll say the reason I say that is look how deep he is. Yeah. I mean, that's borderline a, almost a, you know, he's off the line of scrimmage and you get kind of a, a penalty there. Uh, well, not necessarily because you have enough on the line of scrimmage based upon the other side, but uh, well, possibly even not, but still yet 
you can see automatically that these guys are pulling. And maybe it's one of those things where, all right, hey, uh, try to get a little every little bit of advantage uh, that you can. Uh, but on this counter play, it's it's this the defense again, same sort of thing. And what's what's even more interesting if we back it up right to the snap is they have six guys into the boundary. If you go to the if you count to the right of the center, so you got two down linemen, one linebacker, and then uh, then the three defensive backs over the two receivers. They only have five players into the strength of the formation because you got two tight ends over there, mm-hmm. and like they're just beat. They're beat from from the beginning. Thirty three gets eaten alive by Darnell again, or Fitzpatrick. Sorry on this one. Bowers does a great job of chipping down and then getting where he needs to be on the linebacker. Erickson just, you know, pushes. He doesn't hit the guy really much at all, but he pushes the guy, makes him go outside. He occupies he's out the of space play. that he's supposed to on that play. Yep, he's out of play. McClendon comes through, does a great job, by the way, of being an athlete and finding the hole. Like, he takes – notice that little tiny step that he took where he's about ready to go inside but then steps outside. Phenomenal job by him. And then he goes and eats a lot of somebody else a little bit. All right, there we go. That, that doesn't feel good. Zamir breaks the – Breaks a little bit of arm tackle, and then house call uh, for another touchdown uh, on counter uh, for them. Take it back to the snap here. I love the action that is is possible off of this. We talk about these potential RPOs. I'm just, can Stetson pull this and throw it? I'm not sure, but you see, and it really wouldn't make sense based on the numbers. But he pulled it and ran it against Tennessee. He did, but McConkey with a blocker. Depending yep. on what the defense is throwing, again, like you said, the numbers. The here, numbers advantage make, not there, not there. No. So you wouldn't go to that option. But if the defense is aligned in a different way, this play has a couple different options in theory. Again, can he pull this and actually throw it on this play? We really don't know for sure, but it, it sure has the window dressing if that's what could be happening. Yeah. Again, running the running game. You know, it, it is what it should have been that game. Again, you see Broderick Jones hustling downfield. Good to see from a young guy. Uh, who could find himself playing a lot and a lot of meaningful football uh, in the next couple of games. Yes. So the last two, last two plays offensively that we want to look at are one, a true drop back play uh, on third and 10 and then two, a sort of a check down here. But if you go back to the snap here, when you think about this play, Georgia's completely balanced here, you know, the outside of the back being on the left of the, to the left of the quarterback, two receivers on each side. All right. And then the defense equally balanced. Middle linebacker right over the top of the center, and then five guys on each side. They're obviously, and this is, by the way, this is third and 12, I think, third and 11. They're in a uh, quarters look. You know, you got the four guys deep playing each quarter. There we go, just like that. And all Stetson has to do is choose where he wants to go. But the biggest thing that I want to point out here is something that I really wish and they would do differently. And if you think back to Joe Burrow's year in 2019, one of the things that LSU did, and it's some people coach this, some don't, it just depends on the timing and rhythm of their offense. But for me, based upon watching Georgia over this entire season, especially with Stetson, a quarterback, it's something I'd love to see more of. But as you watch Stetson catch the ball, he's instantly dropping back. And you think, well, that's kind of normal, right? Well, yes, but, He's getting at eight, nine yards, eight, sometimes even nine yards, and he's ready to throw the ball now. But Burton's not even anywhere near – he's you know two steps. When he hits the top of the drop, he's still two, three yards, another couple steps from being at the marker. So one of the things you saw, if you look back at 2019 with Joe Burrow and LSU and and Joe Brady's offensive coordinator, is when the QB, when Burrow would get the snap, there'd be a moment of pause. Like he'd catch the snap pause, then go into his drop. And it allowed a lot of their receivers to work the line of scrimmage if they were getting press or if they were going down the field, it gave you that extra count. And another thing with that is pass protection is if you get too deep there, like uh, offensive lineman is expecting you to be in a certain place, especially a tackle. And they're pushing a guy away. You know, if they get to a certain level, they're pushing them up the field. And if you get too deep there, and he does a good job of at least hitching up and getting into the pocket, and makes a. And by the way, this is there is nothing wrong at all with this throw. It's just something that I've noticed that I wanted to point out from a from a drop perspective and a timing perspective of their passing game that I think could help. 
Well, and let's also point out this route. You talk about playing a foot in the ground. I mean, look look at this extension. Yep. Le- leg in the ground. There. And as soon as he puts, boom, break down, break, chop, chop the feet, turn around, the ball's out on him. Easy first down. Uh, obviously, it's a little different when you're playing against great players who are going to cover you a little differently and, and coverages that you know, aren't maybe necessarily as, as bland as what you see there, but still yet. You know, executing when you need to, third and 12. You don't want to – I mean, I think this was possibly – I think it was the second drive of the game, uh, and you don't want to have something like that uh, just to stop a drive early in a game in a game like this. And I think, you know, at, at the beginning, it's not when you think what's, what's on Stetson's mind here. It's not any more complicated than oh, look at this amount of space. How far is he playing off here? Right. Because you, you know the route. That's a lot of space to work with. So all Stetson has to do is make sure – not crashing yep. down here and getting in that passing line. Yeah, or, or the, making sure that you're not getting any kind of post-snap blitz or rotation of coverage or pressing up. But, you know, things like that you, you typically see right at the snap. Uh, and once you don't see it, you know exactly where you need to go with the football. All right, here we go. James Cook. So one thing that with this that we saw, we actually saw them, I think, try this in the Tennessee game, but I think Stetson ended up running the ball. I can't, I can't remember exactly. But we see this frequently where the back sprints out right before the snap and they just throw the bubble. But here's your layer off of that where it's, all right, we look at the bubble to the outside, pump it a little bit, and then come back to the screen uh, on the interior with Bowers. And it's one of these plays where if you hit this right and you get a defense that's defensive line that's flying up the field, they actually their defensive line actually does a good job. Uh, the right defensive tackle does a good job of uh, reading it and kind of coming back off and, and peeling back and making Bowers cut back to the outside. But if he still flies up the field and Bowers catches it and right there, and that guy's not standing on the 39 yard line, he's possibly, you know, this is a chunk play going back across the left hash, but he doesn't, you know, that guy does a, does a good job of reading it there. And then Bowers has to cut back to the outside. Good positive play. But the reason to show this is this is now couple times where they've shown it just to throw the bubble. Now they've shown it, hey, we're going to throw – you keep flying on the outside, we're going to throw the underneath screen on you. What's the final layer? Is it a stop and go, you know, block, and then stop and go from Burton at the bottom of the screen? Is it, you know, you put Darnell or Fitzpatrick there on the inside, you move them out a little bit, and they go like they're going to block, and then they – fly up the field, you know, on a go route. What is the final sort of layer to this play and one I bet we possibly see in the SEC championship game? I mean, there's a chance they have gadgets off of stuff, something like this, right? Like I've been told that James Cook can throw the ball. I mean, would you want him to at this part of the field? Probably not. But if you get closer, maybe you're at the 25-yard line, toss it to him there, double pass. I, I don't know. Right. But, you know, there are there's, possibilities there's... when you look at these playmakers – and blockers there. Yes, and it's it's again, it's all numbers. Where are your numbers? Where, where are teams playing you? Are they flying up the field? Are they flying outside? Take what they give you. But I, I do think that this is one of those plays where you can have a little quick look out, quick look in, and then another wrinkle up the field uh, to try to hit a big play, especially when you get into plus territory like this on early downs. And frankly, with a guy like Stetson Bennett, after this play begins to develop and you have all of the defense kind of flowing this way. Yep. If these blocks are, are held well, there's a lane here yep. for him to take off and work the backside. Yeah, and it's by the way, if if anybody watched uh, the NFL uh, this weekend, Cam Newton scored on or threw a touchdown pass on basically this exact play, where he looked outside, then QB draw, and then stopped, and the receiver was going on a go route. Uh, into the or on a sort of post route in the middle of the field, true like RPO in the in the dirtiest, nastiest of ways. So things that all sorts of things that they can do, and like we talked about with uh, with Todd Monken and, and the playbook, it's not necessarily that they don't have that they have all this extra playbook just sitting there. It's just wrinkles and layers off of some of the action that possibly they haven't shown and they they've been keeping in their back pocket uh, for what? a game on December what fourth. One potential thing, obviously you're left one-on-one up here. 
if George Pickens finds his way back and is right, you're always looking for how do I get that guy on one-on-one opportunities. If all this window dressing allows that to happen for him, you never know. Yep. You never know. Do we have one more or is that it? Yep, that's one more. There's one more. One more more offensive play and then we're done. All right, so here we talked last week about the whole idea of gunslinger versus game manager for Stetson Bennett. And this is one of the plays where he 100% does exactly what he should do as a true, you know, in that game manager role where Darnell is the clear target here. He comes off of the play action fake. Mitchell's running a hook route at the top. Darnell's running a wheel. And when he's ready to, when Stetson hits the top of his drop, you see him pump and he's ready to throw, but Darnell's getting like guys right in his face. And there's no, you know, sort of true spot to put the ball. And he pumps, and then in, when he sees that, hits the check down. Never go broke, taking a profit. This is something that if he does this in the SEC championship game, whether it's if the big play is there to Darnell or Bowers on the wheel route, take it, make the throw. And if it's not, you take the check down to your back, and you and you look – let your back go get a have a 15 yard almost gain with the way this play worked out. That is making your offense extremely efficient and you know, blending that sort of gunslinger big play mentality with this game manager role. And it was great for me to see that in this game because he could have been, been like, hey, Darnell's, you know, a monster of a human compared to the guy that's guarding him. I'm just going to take the shot and let him, you know, let him try to dunk on the guy but he just took the better play instead. Well, and I know fans may look at this and say, hey, what's Jermaine Burton? Because he does. He, he gets past his guy here, but that's not the read on this play. Like, it's no, obvious his eyes play are, is meant for Darnell. Yeah, his eyes are to the right, clearly. And, and by the way, this is something that you watch. Darnell, they made a made an effort to, get him, to try to get him the ball uh, a decent amount in this game. It just didn't materialize. I mean, there was a good four or five p- passing plays where he – could have and, and probably was the primary target. It just didn't materialize, and and they took the other throws. So they, they keep doing this, and Stetson keeps doing this, where he just takes advantage of giving your best playmakers the ball in that all that space that you are now circling. Good things happen uh, for the offense, and it, you be efficient and continually move the ball forward, can pet, possess the ball, all the things that go with being uh, efficient within an offensive system. And, you know, this is kind of the, the final iteration as I uh, stop sc- sharing my screen here. This is the final iteration of James Cook and what he his potential at Georgia is. And, and frankly, it's probably taken a while to kind of figure out how to best use him. But I, I can tell you some NFL teams are salivating at the chances to get that guy on their roster. Yeah, and when you look at over the past, since basically uh, Alvin Kamara was picked, there's not been a back that's been picked with as few touches as he had at Tennessee that's, you know, obviously done things in the NFL that just cooks the amount of touches that he's had. It's just so few. And when you look at what he's done this year as a senior in terms of, especially as a runner, and that's, that's what we've kind of highlighted uh, over the season, especially with the film don't lie pieces is his evolving as a runner and ability to make people miss uh, between the tackles space, all those sort of things. He's had a career high 3.91 yards after contact per attempt. He's forced 20 missed tackles in 82 attempts, whereas his previous three seasons, he'd only forced 26 in like 118 or 17 attempts. Like his ability and his growth, his leap this year, makes this offense even that much more special when you get him the ball like they have been. So this is Film Don't Lie from UGASports.com. This is the offense. We'll have a complimentary piece on defense that you can check out. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to get all of our content from UGASports.com because as we've kind of evolved this series of Film Don't Lie, which is one of our most popular pieces at UGASports.com, we're really trying to hone in on this video element to illustrate what's happening with the Georgia Bulldogs, Georgia versus Georgia Tech next week, and then Georgia versus Alabama in the SEC Championship. Brent, thank you as always, and thank you all for watching. Uh, We'll be back for more Film Don't Lie here on the UGASports.com YouTube channel.